Hi, I'm Karuna. I'm Maddie. And welcome to Everything But The Fairy Tale Sink. I really started to do my dancey dance beforehand. I feel weird. All right, this week we are covering the Inuit legend of Kalupalik. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I did watch a couple videos on how to pronounce it. Hey, before we start, or do you just want to go into recommendations? I don't have anything to say. Oh, you're fired. Oh, This yeah. is your last episode. Oop. That, that's a shame. I have some good ones coming up. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not sharing my research with you. <laughs> I will do my own research. I know what you're doing. You don't know all of it. I know what you're Anyways, doing. Anyways, what is your recommendation for today, Maddie? Get new friends. Sometimes you just have... <laughs> kidding. My recommendation is the movie Juno. Mm -hmm. can't remember if i've recommended that before but i rewatched it recently and it's fantastic it's got elliot page and allison janney janey i think Um, janey okay and michael sana and a whole like a it's just an all-star cast it's a really good cast and it is just it's really like dry witty humor which i love Mm -hmm. and it's just like it's a really fun movie yeah okay you know what i will incriminate myself a little bit for your sake Mm mm-hmm Dude, I have the biggest crush on Elliot Page. <laughs> He's so cute. I know. My recommendation of the day is Avatar The Last Airbender, if you haven't seen it yet. I know, yeah, I know some people haven't. I'm going to rewatch it soon. It is a masterpiece. I Beautiful. told you to watch how many things, and you're going to... I'm not calling you out. I know that you don't like cartoons, so it's No, I okay. told you to watch, like, a ton of different things, and you're too oh. good to rewatch. It's a masterpiece. But yeah, um, if you haven't seen Avatar before, it's so good. It's a classic for a reason. Bada bing, bada boom. Shall we get into the episode? We shall. And we get to have some science in this one, which is fun. Interesting. Um, so first of all, I'm going to ask, like, what do you think of when you think of the Inuit people from like an American standpoint? They're from Alaska, right? Or like the higher northern areas of Canada? Yes. They are also, so like we best I just don't want to say too much because I'm going to make myself sound absolutely no you're good because i didn't know this until i looked it up so yeah i northern alaska and northern canada are both like pretty common like commonly known settlements of the inuit people but they stretch to denmark and greenland not surprising similar environment um i also read somewhere that there's a settlement in russia but i don't know if that's true um, Who knows if anything that's coming from Russia is true? Anyway, <laughs> a little too spicy. So we're going to go into some of the history here. They are descended from the the Thule people, I believe it is, um, which were a migratory people who first arrived in Canada and Alaska around 1100 AD. Like many indigenous nations, they've unfortunately had their culture completely decimated by colonizers. But thankfully, we still actually do have some of the old stories. Were they good um, at written history like the Egyptians were? Or do no, we just luckily um, have enough stuff preserved? We luckily have enough stuff preserved and we have enough people within the tribes who preserved legends and like kept speaking them and translated them into English and stuff like that. So honestly, we have the Inuit tribe to thank for the fact that as much of their culture still exists as it does. Nice. Um, even if sadly it is just a small fraction of what mm-hmm. there used to be, but it's it's still good that the that certain that you know some people mm-hmm. were able to preserve what they do have because yes. like like we have said in many mm-hmm. previous things, looking at you Norse, a lot of mythology and stories get lost to time because mm-hmm. they're oral or the culture gets washed away or both. So. Or both. So we're thankful for the the cultures who have taken the time to write their things down or to translate their things so that more people can understand them. Though we're also going to give the disclaimer that we completely understand that with the oral histories and stuff like that, they weren't planning on getting wiped out. No, because, well, yeah, and a lot of the time, like, people couldn't even write at those times because Mm -hmm. they could speak. So. Yeah. So. Snorri. We don't need to talk about Snorri. We will Um, next week. Oh, good. So the one one of the surviving legends we have is the legend of the Kalupalik, um, which is an interesting addition to our already existing sea creature repertoire. I and yes, say, we have quite the variety. Here. I was gonna say this is a self roast because I realize I do a lot of aquatic creatures, but aquatic creatures they, and tricksters. Yeah, that's kind of my niche, but like they're so interesting. Is there an aquatic trickster? Probably, because then it's just. But do those cancel out? Perfect. Anyways, we need. So. We're gonna get into the meat of the episode. Yes, let's get into the meat. We got so sidetracked on this one. Um, it's fine. It's a short episode, but also most of the sidetracks have been like 
actually, actually useful. useful. So most cultures have some of like some form of mermaid legend. The Inuit people are no exception to this. The Kalupalik is an aquatic humanoid, though it's unknown if it's just one or if there's many. We also don't know if it's a he, she, they. We don't know a lot about this creature. We just know that it exists. This mermaid is a little different from others. At it, it is ugly. Oh. <laughs> the Kalupalik has scaly and bumpy skin. It has fins protruding out of its head, its back, and its torso. And its hands are wet- oh, and its feet. It also has fins on its feet. Its hands are webbed, but clawed at the same time. And I don't know how that happens, but yeah. Just like, me, chung. Super great descriptors here. Mm -hmm. And it smells sulfuric and foul, and wears clothes made of either duck skin. How do you feel about that? Ducks aren't big enough for that. Oh, there's a lot of ducks. You can get there. The way you, the way you <laughs> just say it, the way you just say it's like it's just it's a smidge threatening, just vaguely. I you, will not. Hurt you ducks. can get there. Ducks there's a okay. lot of ducks. Please, if there's a duck watching this, I will not hurt you. <laughs> I don't know why there'd be a duck watching. All right. So one important piece of clothing that the Kalipa wears is the amautic. I believe I might be uh, mispronouncing that. And this item is used for its favorite pastime. Now, what is this item, you may ask? It's a pouch worn by Inuit women to secure babies to their backs and carry them around. That's right, kiddos. We're dealing with an aquatic stinky baby. I was going to say, are we, are we dealing with a, a child snatcher? Yep. Two children snatchers in a row. Yep. Look at us. We don't intend to do this. Like, no. I had no idea about Cropsy. I, I was going to say, Karina and I, Karina and I, we've communicated more about what our episodes are lately, but we mm -hmm. never tell each other any, any of the information. Yeah. So the fact that we've somehow gotten two gory episodes and then two child snatchers back to back is like absurd. If next week's episode was a gory child snatcher, I would be concerned. I mean, it's is not that not with North Norse mythology. I'm not the, kidding. Not the god I'm covering. Kidding. All right. So parents warn their children about Kalupalik, terrifying with them with the same legends that have been told for generations. There are a few warning signs, which is the most prominent is this humming near the shore. No, the sound absolutely not. I don't know why, but that just sounds so wrong to me. Oh, it does. It really does. So the sound is used to entice curious kids to the water's edge, so that they can be dragged into the depths. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't like that. And even if you're away from the shore, the Kalupalik will knock its fingers under the ice. Okay, that um, is way mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, which, no, no. Well, I'm gonna paint a vivid picture for you. So, mm -hmm. basically, imagine you're, like, three, and no. you wander away from your parents, and then all of a sudden you hear this pleasant little tapping noise. No. So you follow. No. And then all of a sudden you're standing on a weak spot in the ice, or even, like, standing over a hole, and these clawed hands come and snatch you and drag you under. Yeah, I hate it. I hate this it a lot. This is payback for Tech Tech. Am I a three-year-old child now? You're small enough you can fit. <laughs> I'm Why sorry. am I being so threatening? In this I don't know. <laughs> today, today you woke up and you chose violence. Yeah. <laughs> and just so, roast power. There are two possibilities t as to what happens to unlucky children that are snatched up by this creature. One is the straightforward, they were gobbled up like movie theater popcorn. Um, <laughs> Hello, Shade Maday. Isn't that what he the, says in the Krampus video? Like he's he just... might. The other option is, I think, a little scarier because it's longer lasting. So this option is that the Kalipalik stores their prey in an underwater cave and puts them under a sleeping spell where they can stay asleep as their youth and innocence is fed upon to keep no! the creature immortal. No! But no! Is that... <laughs> no. The no finger. No. <laughs> I did not know this episode was going to disturb you so much. I didn't think so either. But I just, <laughs> the fact that I, I'm like minding my own business and then I hear a little tap tap sound, like, uh uh, no, no. Here, 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 here. Am I going to get ASMR? <gasps> Stop. Guess what, Maddie? It's snatching time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a weird mood. 
smooth this morning. I was going to say, no, yeah, I'll ask that question at the end because I don't need to oh. sidetrack us any more than we've been sidetracked. Okay, so this is like one last paragraph here. Um, so anthropologists cite the source of this legend as being potentially pretty u- utilitarian. So think about the place this all like takes place, which is the northernmost reaches that humanity can safely live. Even today, considering global warming and rising temperatures, the average surface water temperature of the Atlantic Ocean is 28.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, how does this thing survive? Blubber. Fair enough. A lot of things survive in the waters up there. I don't know how. Blubber. Um, Yeah, so that is below the freezing temperature for seawater. And if I remember correctly, that's like 30 degrees with the salt. For comparison, the lowest average for the Pacific Ocean is 47 degrees. And the Atlantic is Ocean is enough. 44. And that's, I mean, Th- that's those still are enough still, to give you hypothermia. I was going to say, those are still low enough temperatures to give you hypothermia if you're in it for too long. Mm-hmm. So, full disclosure, these numbers are from just a quick Google search, but you still get the point. These waters mm-hmm. are pretty darn cold. Parents would have been well aware of the dangers that the water temperatures pose. So, a legend about a scary sea monster would have been perfect to keep the kids away from the ocean and her dangers. I mean, I suppose it is easier for children to grasp the concept of I think so. don't go near the water because something will get you, mm-hmm. rather than don't go near the water, it's too cold, when you're growing up in an environment that is already very cold. Mm-hmm. So, that's what uh, anthropologists seem to think the source of the legend was, which actually makes a lot of sense. It does make a lot um, of sense. It sounds like many boogeyman urban legends where, mm-hmm. you know, they don't want you going near a place, so they tell you that something will get you rather than saying, well, mm-hmm. it's really dangerous and the building could fall on you. It's like, oh, there's a, a creepy old man that lives there. He'll take you. Yeah. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe there is really a terrifying creature in the Arctic waters, or maybe the waters themselves are the actually dangerous part. I'd rather not figure it out. From. Yeah. Anyways, that brings us to the end today. Do you have a question? Going back to snatching, if you were to be snatched by any of the creatures that we mm-hmm. have talked about thus far, including the episodes that haven't been released, who would or what would you want to be snatched by? Does it have to be something that does snatching already? No. That one mermaid from the, le- like, the, the really, one. really nice domestic one. Yes! Like, honestly, I will Who be a house- guy just because she was in love with him, and then yeah, I'll, I'll and be then an undersea into- housewife for you. Yeah, that does sound that great. great. You get to become a mermaid and have a nice life of uh-huh. domesticity. Uh-huh. I will also take that. <laughs> All Anyways, right, what's coming up next week? Our favorite child snatcher, Thor. No. no I, was like, I, I was like, well, next week isn't a gory child snatcher. And you're like, is it? So, yes, our favorite gory child snatcher, the Norse god Thor. Why did that make my brain break? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no. We're going back to ye old Norse mythology and Snorri Snurlson. Great. Probably the most popular Norse god. Mm hmm. And Loki's adoptive brother in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Which is not a thing in Norse mythology. It's very weird. Yeah, no, I break that whole thing down, and I do a mm-hmm. comparison between Marvel Thor and Myth Thor, and it's quite a trip. No, Thor, <laughs> the favorite gory child snatcher. <laughs> okay. Um, Anyways, we will also have a guest for next week. Oh, yeah. We will. I won't say, I who, I won't say who, but yeah, um, we will have a guest. Are we doing that Yes. Oh, did you still have more to say about the episode? Yeah. Sorry. The episode will also be on the longer end. So after all these short episodes, we will go back to a longer episode, which will be a nice break. It will be a nice Mm -hmm. little change. So, yes. Now we can get into wishes. Okay. My wish for our audience is that, I just remembered this because I hit that if you are having to deal with something sharp, that you manage to not cut your finger. That's a good one. Because it's really, really unpleasant. (laughs) I cut the tip of my finger. It's really hard to type. And mm-hmm. I work on a job that's almost entirely on a computer. Mm-hmm. So don't do that. Yes. My wish is that you just do something that makes you happy. Maybe like take a day for self-care or go out and get some ice cream. Just do something that makes you happy. Mm-hmm. That's my wish. Anyways. Yeah. Sorry we were a little like discombobulated this episode. So what we get for filming in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go make myself coffee. No. And work you're on not, finals. You're not out of here yet. I'm not? No. What do we have to do? The outro. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
<laughs> Idiot. Shut Anyways, up. before we get into the outro, just a quick little incentive here that I've been saying at the end of every episode. No, I'll attack you. <laughs> no, what? So, if we hit 50 followers on Instagram and 50 subscribers on YouTube, I will buy a giant cardboard cutout of Loki, and he will live in the background of the videos. And if we hit 100 followers on Instagram and 100 subscribers on YouTube, and this product exists, Karina will buy a giant cardboard cutout of Catra from the She-Ra series. She-Ra, oh She-Ra. She-Ra. It probably does. Let's see. Do you want to do the outro while I see if it exists? Sure. Thank you so much for watching. Um, like this video, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff we're supposed to ask you to do. I'm not used to doing this outro. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on TikTok, which there should be some stuff up for there. Oh god, what did you find? I, I think it exists. The website should be up by this point, because we're releasing this a little bit later in the summer. What did I, you find? I, I googled capture cardboard cutout. Uh-huh. That's what the second thing is. I love how you got called out trying to call me out. Literally. That's rough, bud. Loki cardboard cutout. Nice. Stupid internet. <laughs> That's rough, bud. <laughs> um, anyways, I'm still not agreeing to that, by the way. Whatever. But that's a little bit more possible than the One Direction tapestry. <laughs> I'm not spending. No, I would never spend on a One Direction tapestry when I don't even like One Direction. And remember, because there was no better way to work it into the episode, niches end up in ditches. There had to have been a better way to work it. Niches end up dragged, dragged under the ice. Okay, now I'm gonna go get coffee, unless there's yes. something else. I no, forgot about. now we just have to say bye. Okay, goodbye. Bye. See you next week. That sounded threatening. You were already very threatening this episode. <laughs> I know. <laughs>